this is real life and, and we're all, we all have our moments. It's hard, it's hard to be a human on this planet right now. And there are many people who are kind of burying their head in the sand and just, you know, going for the zombie thing because it's easier. I mean, meditation is a self-hypnosis. So you start to use the mind, which is a great tool and a time-space machine and you can travel anywhere simultaneously literally instantaneously so it's an incredible gift that we've been given people are waking up at mass mass speed on this planet and one thing that i will say that is my big message right now is the majority of the people on the planet want to live in a generous way if you can become in any way an inspiration to another human being that's a victory And I had wings and could fly so high. Hi there, welcome to Reality Riffing. I'm so excited about this episode because Latham Thomas is here joining me, who is a real um, incredible, I'm, I'm going to use the word maverick, you use the word mm -hmm. maven, which um, they both have a great weight um, in women's health and in the birthing rooms and with women and their fertility and just the whole kind of conversation. You've been at this a long time and I just want to honor the amount of work that you've done in this arena, which is so important, which what we were just talking about. Um, graduate of Columbia University. You have all sorts of accolades. This is your second book that just came out called Own Your Glow. Um, it's very, very beautiful. Congratulations. We were just talking about, I mean, these things are, these things are, they're, they're babies. They are. They're such massive creations. Um, and it's just so beautiful. And it sold out like in what? I mean, this, the, two it, weeks. Yeah. It's so you're in your second printing. Um, and so you can't get it right this second, but you'll but be you able can. to get it soon. Oh, yeah, can you? you okay. Can. Okay. Yeah. Good. Bye. Right. <laughs> um, so this is very, very, very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. And I'm so happy to have you here in a very important time this week. Mm. And just this this time to talk about women's health and all the work that you're doing so welcome Guru Jagat thank you so much for having me as well and it's like a love fest because for me it's such an honor to be here and also to have you in this time open a space for people to come to basically return home to themselves and um, in a time that's most needed I think that at any moment where um, life is threatened, where uh, virtue is threatened, there's sanctuaries and places for people to take refuge, like we were talking about earlier, that um, seem to come through the cracks of the sidewalk. And this is, I think, the work that you really do is um, go into the hardest of places to like gather the people. and. Um, and, and create a space for them to come so that they can be at ease. And now more than ever before, yeah. we need these spaces. So thank you for just welcoming me into this home. I'm so cozy. It, it's kind of a womb in here, it isn't is it? It has a bit of a womb vibe. Our, our studio in Venice actually looks like a, a bit of a vagina. It, like, it's, yes. it's like a V. It's very, somebody else said to me, she's like, that studio is such a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> the cosmic service. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know. Um, so we were speaking before this, and I think that I'd love to just riff on this conversation, which is that I feel like a lot of people, women included, mm -hmm. are surprised even in the Western world by how much basically we're at war for women's health in yeah. all sorts of ways from mm -hmm. fertility to our sexual health, our reproductive health, our mental health, our emotional health. That's so right. I'd love to just talk. You're on the front lines. What are you seeing? It's almost 2018. Yes. And we live in America. What are you seeing as being kind of some of the biggest, um, biggest things that we're up against? Well, I think it's really interesting that now there's an awakening around the female body and its superpowers. Yeah. Um, and because of that, 
there's so much more legislation, there's so much more resistance and sort of pushing our rights and, um, and services that we really need to thrive underground. So um, one of the first things I guess we could look at is really how the medical system and how the political system are so intricately tied. From really the beginning of time when, you know, there were um, church friars that would open up cadavers to study them, to, you know, learn about the body. They were opening up male cadavers. They were ordered not to study female bodies because they were considered obviously dirty because of the Bible, um, because apparently like Eve ate some fruit and like right. we're damned. <laughs> apparently. Apparently we're damned. So, like, um, oh, apparently we came out of a male rib. We came out of a rib. <laughs> I mean, right. and that, so that we're, the whole you know, yeah. passageway, like it had nothing to do. Yeah. So it was a rib and, um, and an apple. Unfortunately, I find them tasty, but an apple. So, um, as a result, right, there's this thing where the, the church, um, you know, was in position to begin what became the rudiments of the medical system. Yeah. And so then you have like men then using the language of the male lens mm -hmm. to layer onto the female body without having actually taken into account anything that right. the body does. Right. So our first drawings and our first, um, diagrams and all these things that you see that refer to the body are through the male lens. Wow. And so that's gone on for forever. And so then finally, once it was like that they actually did start studying our bodies, um, there's still less of an importance on our health. So if you think about all the things that plague men and their bodies, and then you look at the things that happen to women, um, it's exponentially, there's exponentially more um, lives lost yeah. and there than there are for male lives because there's surgeries that they can have that they can walk out the same day and there's things that we have treatment for so it's there's less of a focus on actually curing things that plague women or that attack us than there are for men if it's something that's gonna plague men they're gonna figure out how to solve it in a pill or like a right. nip and tuck or something right whereas it's not that kind of focus on women's health yeah so we don't really see like the race for the cure for prostate cancer, you see the race for the cure for breast cancer, yeah. or you see like heavily for ovarian cancer, things mm -hmm. like that we don't see because it doesn't exist for them right. as a reality. Right. And so when we think about that as you know, a foundation, like we're not as important. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. when you enter into the medical system and the language that's used around our bodies and particularly in the, the you know, area that I'm in, in yeah. uh, around pregnancy, um, you know, it's alarming, like the language yeah. and the, yeah. even like how a doctor will stand over you and speak at you mm. or, um, you know, the, the terminology around, um, processes that are wild, yeah. um, so that they can wrangle the body and try to control something that is, um, basically sacred and holy and unfolds in its own time, yeah. right, in sacred yeah. time. Yeah. There's a, a, a forcing of it into this kind of box so that it can, you know, be in a timeline which doesn't exist, you know? Yeah. And so these primal processes are never honored or protected. And so for someone like me who comes into the space as a doula to help protect that experience and the integrity of that experience for yeah. the woman or the couple, I'm seeking to preserve the way she remembers and recalls that experience, mm. as well as um, to protect the energy of the soul so that it can yeah. enter the sacred passageway and and arrive here um, with minimal trauma. Yeah. Um, I wanna also make sure that the mother is born into the light of motherhood um, in a veil of safety, security, and a sense of belonging, but also a sense of being unobserved, Yeah. right? So I think that protection piece is so critical and we have to create spaces for obviously ritual. Mm -hmm. And what I love so much about this practice is that 
it's embedded in the feminine. Like there's feminine yeah. rhythm all throughout. There's rhythm, there's ritual, mm. there's repetition. Yeah. And that creates a space for you to get out of your thinking brain, get into your primal body yeah. and be present with source energy. Mm. And that is, and, and I think birth is real, like Kundalini is birth, birth is Kundalini. It's the same Absolutely. thing, it's the same energy. 100%. That is like, that, but we have to help people get there yeah. who who um, who aren't on their way yet. And so um, when I walk into these spaces, I'm not only looking to support the mother, but even like the other practitioners that are working with right. us, right? right? To make sure that they come in and they're gonna be of service and not an impediment to the process. So I see, you know, when we talk about on the front lines, you know, in, I mean, in this administration and what's currently happening, I see this uh, lack of attention because we have never had a focus on, you know, maternal, Lord, maternity yeah. and maternal um, sort of rights. We have really like um, reproductive rights as a larger lens, but specifically focused on abortion, but not really like, okay, what happens if I am having a baby though? Yeah. And what happens when I go to the hospital and they force this? Or what happens when I have this type of birth outcome? Mm -hmm. We haven't really been focused in as a nation on women and, and motherhood. Yeah. And I believe that mothering should be at the top of the feminist agenda. We are all here because we come through a woman. Right. And so how are we gonna have a nation? How are we gonna do nation building and healing if we don't um, revere and honor and protect our mother? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, well, really well put. And I, I was just actually, I had no way, I didn't, I knew this, but I didn't even, I mean, these are just like these little clues on the breadcrumbs of how big the systemic mm. sexism and just the systemic, the, it, the the patriarchal structures that we are now in the midst of watching them, as we, I call it circling the drain, yes. um, which is why we're getting so much of this kind of last gasp of that kind of patriarchal, mm -hmm. the, the old way is, it's crumbling. This it is, is, Rome is falling and we are witnessing it. We are falling. in the midst of it. Yes. Um, but one thing that I just someone you know I was listening to a doctor. He's a he's a man, but he's he's really like particularly because of his mother. Mm -hmm. He was very interested in finding out why his kind of ideas of weight loss and and um, metabolism weren't fitting with his female clients, which most of his clients were were women. Mm -hmm. um, and then his hardest case was his mother. And so I, w I really enjoy uh, his perspective, but one of the things he was saying is that all of f like fitness or caloric or kind of those types of studies are all done on young men. Right. And it just doesn't, it doesn't fit. So, so basically we have ba this, I mean, now you can see, at least after I, I started going into the rabbit hole of this, I mean, this is a systemic way that's basically being put on a woman's body for yes. why we should feel bad about not being able to lose weight the same way or when the hormones change at certain cycles or certain yes. moments of, you know, in, in, in a woman's life and why we have to pay attention to the sensitivity of yes. that and how that, so it just those little moments where I get those kind mm. of breadcrumbs of then you start to see the big picture of how big this is. And at the same time, the, the awakening of the Kundalini, which is happening, that, that mm. you know, whatever you want to call it, but the awakening of the life force in yes. on this planet and in the the divine feminine um this is this is called the adi shakti it's a yes. symbol for the primal yes. power of the woman mm -hmm. and so that that kind of awakening is happening and i feel that it's you know it's happening very rapidly yes. it's, it's 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 an exciting time to be a woman and mm -hmm. to be kind of on the front lines of these women's issues so um i you know i feel really blessed to to be here, but I love the way that you talk about the kind of what it requires in terms of also bringing, because I, I, men and women, because of the way we were raised in yeah. terms of this this time that we came from, everyone suffered under this. So mm -hmm. you get in a room with, with doctors and nurse practitioners and wherever you are, mm -hmm. and it's not that they don't want to do it differently, it's just that there really has never been a space made for them. So There has not been a space made. 
And I think that, you know, there's also a difference between making space and making room. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think, are being called now to make room. Like there are, you know, technical spaces, like, yeah. oh, well, we have this birth center for the women in the hospital, or we have this breastfeeding room on site for you, but it gets taken over by people taking conference calls, or, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. Or, yeah, no, sure, you can breastfeed at work, um, you know, in the bathroom stall, right? Right. Like they're, but making room for women, like really honoring that the nature of being female is change. Yeah. The nature of being in these bodies that we live in is, is change. And like, I might commit to something today and tomorrow I might feel completely different because yes, on a cellular <laughs> level, on a psychic level, on, you know, um, in connection with the moon and what's happening, I might be feeling completely differently. Yeah. And that's okay, mm -hmm. but also that's power. Like to, to be able to harness that and know on a moment to moment basis what it is that you need is I think being tapped into that creative force energy and to know that it's summoning in you what you need most in any given moment, which is why we live these practices is not so that in, we can just come into these spaces and like feel cool and be around cool people, right. but it's no like what's so that's that fun too leave, but that's amazing but then when we leave but we want to be able to activate we want yes. to be able to take it into the world and what i love right now that's happening is that like people who people are being like lifted into activism yes instead of like staying on you know the cushion right. with it right? right they're being thrust yeah. forth and that's why there's so many people seemingly having these conversations now you can overhear it mm -hmm. because now everybody is being um a mirror everybody has to like be a filtration system to like allow these things that do not belong in us to come through the sieve so you can really look at oh my god look what i was holding yeah you know yeah. and hold it to the light yeah so I think it's a I think it's an interesting time too. I I think if you're watching the news and if you're getting caught up in these systems, you're, it's terrifying. Yeah. But I think that if you, you know, if you're not doing that and you go into spaces like you come here, you're like, oh no, this is this is what it is. Yeah. It's not yeah. that. Yeah. Like that exists, but that is that exists through the the lens of. Um, like you said, of crumbling, like I'm yeah. seeing yeah. almost like fract fractal pieces of something that is part and parcel falling completely apart. It is. And that's Which is why part of the mania, the, the panic, panic that's happening. Right. I, I mean, it, it really, you can feel the like, oh, oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we've controlled this matrix on this planet mm -hmm. for thousands of years um, in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And now. No more. No more. And the, 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 there's hysteria because of it. Completely. And another thing I think is so interesting is like this, um, so darkness. When I think about darkness, um, I see darkness as divine because everything grows in the dark, yeah. all things, right? And so when I think about like how also in obscurity, darkness protects. And so when we look at the things that are now coming into the light, that have it's like they've been they've been attached and yeah. fed through this womb really yeah. of um you know it's now it's now coming that these things that you know are happening in our um in our government and other places in in popular culture yeah like everywhere where there was any obscurity and any protection whatsoever is being lifted. You know, the cockroaches are, 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 are scattering. scattering. Okay. The rats, it's everything. Joe's apartment. Did you ever watch Joe's apartment? Yes. <laughs> it's, everything. It's, it's Joe's apartment around here. Okay. I mean, the thing is really getting think, uncovered. Yes. So yeah. everywhere you look, now you can see what it really is. Yeah. So now nobody has a, a choice to be like, oh, well, I don't see that, or I don't know what's going on, or I don't have to. No, you have to see it. Yeah. 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 What do you, you know, so we're in the wellness space, mm -hmm. and this is, the, I mean, talk about, I, I find it very interesting how 
things systematize, how are just the cultural kind of control matrix, how that gets co-opted into mm, everything. I was, yeah. I, I was talking this morning. I'm like, if you just don't want to die, like eat food, go to work and die and call that a life, then you're spiritual. Mm -hmm. Like there's no barrier to end. Like this is not, we don't, we're not precious. This is not special. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look a certain way or be a certain age group or, and it's a very important part of my message. And yeah. I, I know this is something that mm -hmm. you also talk about and I I'd love to just talk to you uh, you know as you because you have been in the you've been in the wellness space before there was a wellness space as I have yep. <laughs> um, and as this has kind of developed how you how you feel like we can also be revolutionary inside kind of that space because mm. I think it's very very important I that we're you. not all just nepotizing on each other and and uh, ta talking in a bubble but like yes. we got to get real and yeah so I'd love to hear some of your take on that I mean, even look where you decided to like root this space, right? Like if people come here, they have to pass through a community that has been here. Yeah. Um, the community that is here gets to walk past a beautiful space and get curious and then come in and then commune yeah. and then receive, and right? So it's like you could have gone to you know, Park Ave or, yeah. you know, you could have yeah. gone anywhere, yeah. right? But you came to a place that also deserves and needs beauty, yeah. that also needs hope. And so I think that um, it's, it's that. It's yeah. like, where do, where do we need to go? It's like also using discernment around like the choices that we make. But I love what you said about like making sure that we're not just in this bubble and just like talking to each other because yeah. like, who cares, right? Right, right? Like, I think that there's so many people who like need the work and then you hear like, oh, the church doors are open and then like nobody, but really the church doors are not right. open. Nobody can come to right. the church unless right. they're dressed a certain right. way right. or whatever. Right. And, and that we gotta get, <clears throat> we gotta get out of that. We yeah. gotta really allow people to come and to be in, in, in these spaces, no matter what they look like, how much money they have, if they have the right outfit, you know, whatever. I think, um, you know, what I love is that there's so many people through, also people find through social media and all these places where you can see examples mm -hmm. of people living out principles that yes. you can start to incorporate into your life today. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, you don't have to be like, oh, well, I also like shoes, so, you know, yeah, I can yeah. do whatever. my fashion, yeah. whatever. Or yeah. I also, you know, want to live in the world and, and be able to give, but I also want to live well. Like, I think, you know, making people feel bad about the... Um, the way that they carry out their spiritual life. Mm -hmm. um, we have to stop doing that. Yeah. You know, I think people will, um, you know, say, oh, well, it's only spiritual if it's this way. Right. Or if you do it like this, or if you do it like that. Well, that act in and of itself of judgment is not, you know, being spiritual, right? right, right. So I think it's just like letting people be. Mm. And, and, the, and the people who I find that are most rooted in that are people like you who like welcome everybody yeah like everybody's coming it's not just and you can tell that a person's living out their message by the people who show up because you can that is you that, can. that's a good that's a very that's a great point because that's the fruit right yeah. like that means that you're reaching the people if there's a variety of people who show up and so um because they feel safe they feel yeah. like i'm not judged here i can come here yeah we have to allow everyone to show up. I think, um, you know, developing programs or, uh, you know, something where it's like maybe like a $5 class or I do believe that everybody should pay something if they enter a space, if they enter a temple, that they should offer something. Yeah. Um, I don't like saying, oh, free because right. like then people don't place value and they don't respect. Absolutely. So it should be yeah. something that they yeah. bring. Um, or if it's like an energy exchange of like, well, I can do this service or I can pass out flyers mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it is that they want to do. But like then something that people who can normally not be able to afford to come can come, whether that's an online course that you're doing or if you have a space that people can come yeah. to, making sure that the people can also come. I think that um, a lot of in the wellness space, you'll see things that really are packaged for people who can afford it. Yes. And it doesn't look like it's accessible. Yeah. And it also makes wellness look one way. 
And um, I mean, there's a very specific way. I'm, I'm, I'm basically launching a revolution against this kind of whitewashed, minimalist, you know, anemic, in my opinion, anorexic vibe of, right. and, and I don't mean that in this, but, but there's that too, a, a vibe of the wellness industry, right, where, like where that, to be that, that's what wellness looks like, that right. it's that sanitized, and it's like, no, 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 wellness looks like richness, not, and whatever that is for you, I mean, it right. can be very different for everyone right. but I do I, I feel like um, you know, it's just like that's what I love I love the color and the, yeah. because it's just it's important for people to feel like you know they can just be themselves yes. but but a little bit more amplified in their yeah. way and how well they feel definitely more what, amplified yeah that's yeah. you know and that's that's like and and that is and I know that um part of the mission with writing books is that you know anyone all over the world can do can, do, can get this and and have a massive toolkit mm -hmm. of things that they could practice that will just allow for an experience of wellness in any moment and yes. and it's really one of the most important things the messages that yeah you can be giving people. Um, but yeah, I think just even in the aesthetic of, or in the way that wellness is presented in yeah, these the kind packaging. of, yeah, and the, or the, pan, you know, even the way that it's spoken of and on the panel or on mm. the thing, or it just, there's a, there's a major barrier to entry. So, yeah. Um, I do love that you're you're really kind of opening that space and, and, and speaking to a much bigger Thank audience. You. And it's, you too, because I think that we have to go to those places. Like, I mean, I see you in all kinds of spaces that people don't necessarily expect you to be, yes. which is so important that yeah. you answer the call in that way. And I also think um, another thing is, you know, with being inclusive is like, you know, yeah, like reaching across to bring people into the fold that like maybe your community wouldn't know. Yes. Um, and also another thing, and I spoke about this like recently uh, when I was someplace and it was like not really diverse. And I said, you know, I think it's really important to, cause they were saying something about, um, you know, it seems like wellness is so huge right now. It's like, um, it's actually always been on women's minds, like how to engage with their bodies and yeah. what's happening. And, you know, which is how we have all these incredible rituals and practices and, you know, customs and um, healing modalities because we have always been experimenting to figure yeah. out how to incorporate our knowledge, consciousness, plants, and, you know, with how we engage with our bodies. And so I just think that people have figured out with the tools that we have, like the internet, how to commodify and repackage ancestral wisdom and tradition from many places yes. and resell it to people. So right. I think that's new, but I don't think that the, the interest is new. I think the interest has always been there. I just think that now also you have people that you can attribute like, okay, she helped me get well because being with her, you know, or this person or that person, like I was able to find like a pathway to right. empowerment yeah. through really connecting with my body. But I think that, you know, we can only really be living examples for people and show them tools and, and open up space for them. And that's why I feel like, you know, so many people will feel called to like, oh, I want to open a studio. I want to do this or that. But you're one person that I don't know how you do it because like it's I just don't know how you do it but I think it's incredible because with all the traveling and the speaking and the giving you still made it a priority to in this time also make sure that a place even where our president the so-called president is from here you know like to root here because yeah. people really need it yeah. and so I think that that's really what it is. It's about, I think, really figuring out where we're needed most yeah. and not just speaking, like you said, to yeah, the people at the, that could afford to pay the ticket to go to this place mm -hmm. that nobody else will see the content and then you're like immersed around each other and just yes. having so much fun and then yeah. you go out in the world and you're like, oh my God, like people are really sick, right? Yes. I think it is doing what you did here and what you do. Like yeah. that is how I think yeah. we change it. I do too, and and I I it's you know I'm very because I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm punk rock obviously and I love like you. a punker <laughs> um, I know it's really obvious but um, but I I do feel like just as leaders in the in the wellness space and what it it is definitely has become and what you know the different kinds of. Um, 
just as all institutions, how they, what, what I think it's important from the ground up to mm -hmm. be really like a, a loud voice and mm -hmm. no, you know, actually this is, um, this is about anybody at any moment yeah. feeling better than they felt the moment before. That's right. That's wellness. That's it. That's it. Yep. And how can we, how can we serve the, cause the more people on this planet that feel well, mm -hmm. that feel healthy, that, that, that maybe, you know, start to like themselves or feel like they're making good choices mm -hmm. or feel like they're in right action. The more of those people, the better parents we have, the better uh, civilians we have, the that's better right. business people we have. So that's, that's, that's the real wellness revolution. That's right. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So, it's pretty accessible. And, it's, and, and in, you know, the, the, my opinion, and Yogi Bhajan spoke a lot of this, and we just, we just, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm chasing pregnant women down the, the, the uh, street <laughs> always. Like, hey, do you want to, you just come over, I'll give you a mantra. Like, I'm such a weirdo. Um, but it's the most, it's really the most important work we can do because mm. this is the future. It and is. And the, when the mother is the first teacher. The yep. mother is the, the first guru, is what we call her. Yep. She's the first teacher. She is. And um, it's, a, it's a huge space of how we can change the future is working with women yes. in prenatally, in conscious conception, yes. postnatally, and and in parenting. I mean, yes. it really and and the men as well. I mean, 100%. but the mother is the first teacher, and yes. then the man comes in and and hopefully will be a, a huge part of another phase of exactly. the child's life. Yeah. So, um, are there any things that you you could just you know simple things for mm. women who are thinking about getting pregnant mm -hmm. or who are pregnant or in you know whatever phase of that kind of experience mm. anything that you feel like recently or in your work that that has been like inspiring you that you think women should know about or or just have a access to hmm. a practice or a way yeah. of thinking you know I feel just as you just said you know the womb is the mother's the first teacher and the womb is the first environment. And so when we think about um, our planet and now we think about like our womb as being, um, you know, a multiverse inside of our bodies. Mm. Um, if we can look at what's happening in the world and we can feel um, painful or symptomatic periods, uh, we know that the pain that we feel is the pain that is encircling our world and that it's a um, it's a reflection of what's happening right around us mm. and what we're internalizing yeah and so if we can I love that you said you stop these women in the street you know to offer because we totally do it's good you know why yeah. because it's medicine yeah and it's like if you have mantra if you have if you create you can create space anywhere so oh that's another thing it's like, we don't need, it's amazing if you can. It's amazing if you have like an extra room in your house and you transformed your attic into like this yoga right, right. shala, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's amazing, but like not everybody can like no. create the shala or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But you can, you don't even need a, a mat. Yeah. You can, you have a tush, it's got some flesh on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Pl like plop it down somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And then just allow yourself to connect with the living energy and the essence, mm -hmm. you know, the breath first. And then use, you don't have to think about mantra in terms of, oh, I don't know what it means, or I don't know, like just um, creating the shape with your mouth and then letting the breath come through the throat. Mm -hmm. When we activate our, um, our throat box, it innervates every other organ in the body. Yeah. And so for women to know, like when you think about the power of speaking up for yourself in this time that we live, when you use your voice to sound mantra, like that seed sound reverberates through your body. So it's not, this is not like, you know, Guru Jagat's not asking you to just like for fun make these sounds, but for science yeah. make these sounds, like to actually activate each and every cell mm. and to also push blood flow as well as um, spin your cells so mm. that they become active mm. through every aspect of every organ that the voice touches through the body. So with yeah. using that, it sends it down throughout mm. every organ and the vibration um, opens up 
areas where there may be blockages or maybe tension, uh, where there may be pain, uh, where there may be like a not good cell, like a mm-hmm. cancer cell mm-hmm. that may not want to contribute to the health of that organ that you can spin out of, you know, that you can destroy using the power of your voice. So we have to think of these tools, these ancient tools as, um, as technology, not as like, oh, like this woo-woo thing that I'm doing or whatever, because yeah. I know people think this. Yeah. And, but like, look at the people that you know who constantly go to kundalini or constantly go to yoga or whatever it is like people are always asking oh they look so young or they right, look so right. this or how come you <laughs> right. don't seem stressed it's yeah. like i'm using the tools right that's right so it's like use these tools and know that like the power is inside mm. right so but but it it's it's activated by you turning it on. You have to say, I'm going to not be afraid of my voice. Mm. I'm gonna sound in the class with other people. It does not help if everyone else is sounding and you're not. Or I'm going to do it in the safety of the space that I'm in, in my room or wherever I am. And I'm gonna use the power of sound Mm. and I'm gonna activate my voice. I'm gonna awaken my body Mm. and I'm gonna channel this energy once I get active in it. I'm going to channel this energy into every other aspect of my day and touch every other person that I come into contact with yeah. instead of being like, oh, like I have to make these sounds because mm-hmm. that's a different consciousness. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So think about like how we can use the power of the te- technology to activate our bodies, but then also to expand the mind and the consciousness and then and then see that how that is and transform your experience in your body um you know these tools that we get when we come are just weapons of consciousness yeah you know what i mean and I we do. have to go out into the world and i don't want people to think we're, we're fighting it's not like battle in that way it's a different type of battle that requires spiritual fitness and yes. spiritual tools and if you don't cultivate them you are going to find yourself depleted you're going to find yourself with anxiety Mm. you're going to find yourself in offices that you don't belong because they do not have the tools to help you they will offer you drugs they will offer you um anything but what you really need is to listen to yourself yeah so that's why we come places like this because this is preventative medicine Mm -hmm. this is spiritual medicine this is about being able to be in your body and also transcend your body. And so if you can't find comfort in that, then um, the things that are gonna be happening as everything falls are going to affect you in such a traumatic way. Right. And we cannot afford to allow ourselves to be falling to the wayside as things crumble. We have to be active because we have to help other people who are not capable of helping themselves. Absolutely. Amen. (laughs) A woman. A woman. Um, (laughs) No, but I mean, that's the whole game. It's like we're not doing it for ourselves anymore. And I know mothers understand this deeply, Mm -hmm. but all women are mothers of something, whether they choose to be a, a mother of a human human child, human form or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really, we have to be able to inner resource. That's right. I know you're kind of on a crazy um, <laughs> book tour and you're, you know, so much is happening. You're an mm-hmm. entrepreneur and you're just doing so much in the world. What What are your personal practices or what are you doing right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I think it's just good to, because things get real. Things I mean, get real. Things get real. And totally. I think it's, I really try to tell people like, I, you know, we're, we're on planes and trains and automobiles mm-hmm. and all sorts of things like w- what would be what is your practical kind of go-to that you're working with just to kind of get yourself through this this oh, so good. time i love that planes trains automobiles thank god for tsa <laughs> i mean um, pre- yeah because <laughs> we do not plan to get there yeah. early um so for me you know i love to um I think pacing is really important. Mm. And so um, I'm really attuned to the pace of grace, which for me just really means uh, I rise with the intention of listening to how the day is unfolding through with my body, but also with what's happening around me. So I'm trying to always uh, 
check in with myself. Yeah. And so when I rise up, I think it's important um, to have like a ritual for attuning yourself for the day so that things aren't happening to you. Right. I'm not interested in like things happening to me. I'm, yeah. int I'm interested in things happening through me. So I need to be a really clear like vessel, mm. like almost translucent so I can be able to deliver whatever it yes. is I need to. Yes. And so, um, so for me, like whatever energy I was marinating in, in my sleep, whatever the dreams were, I want to be able to get that out. Um, if it was wisdom, I want to be able mm. to write it down or talk about it or something. So I try to do that. And then I also just take a moment to have a seated, a seated practice and um, and sometimes I'm in a hotel. Yeah. Sometimes it's like really nice weather. I can go outside. Mm. Other times I just sit on like a really nice cushy rug, just like this, right underneath my bed. Yeah. Um, or like a little cushion, and whatever it is. But I but I do that because it just helps to get me centered, and I then know what to do next. It's like almost like everything else happens as yeah. a result of me having done that so it's like putting the switch on um but then outside of that it's like for me baths really help me a lot totally you know it's like these little simple things i carry the the bath salts we make this amazing bath salts mm. called a uh, glow time it's a rosy glow time bath and it's amazing and so i bring that with me and i pour that in it makes the bath pink i try to bring like rose petals or How something fun. beautiful you know to put in the tub yeah and i just soak wherever i am sometimes you get these hotels that don't have baths and that's unfortunate I know. but which i don't know what that's about i don't know what that, I'm like, that's this is that, a new hotel that was not a woman's tub. idea that's i'm just right. gonna say it's, that it's not. i mean seriously it's not so i do this but um you know another thing too for me it's like you know if I'm gonna speak or if I'm gonna greet someone or if I'm gonna show up to a birth, whatever, like I also wanna show up clear, you know, to that space so I yeah. can so I can help to be a presence of support and not distract. Yeah. And so um so sometimes too for me it'll be like lighting um an incense or Palo Santo or um or sage or something, one of the, you know, holy plants to clear the mm. energy and clear the air. And my grandmother who recently passed was always say to me when I was younger that um you know smoke is the medium that spirits can breathe in mm. and so if you light um you know and create smoke then as much as you ask for clearance and clarity you also ask for your ancestors and guides to show up mm. to also they come down and you know mm. when the smoke comes up yeah and so then they can come and administer those aha moments or call in your angels or bring into the fold whatever it is that you need for that solution so i Beautiful. so if i feel like i need a little bit of that yeah then i also make some space for that type of ritual and i can ask for what it is that i need to receive and i'll do something like this but those are really simple things i think because i i feel like when we get complicated around rituals people you know, they don't try them. Yeah. And there's and very just simple. just like glaze over. They're like, oh, yeah. I can't do yeah, that. Yeah. Like you gotta go over here and you gotta get that <laughs> right. from Peru. And right. you gotta, it's like nothing crazy. No, no just, dead chickens. No dead chickens. Like, yeah, like nothing crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to go to like, yeah, you don't have to go yeah. nowhere to like get chicken feed or anything. Super simple. But also I think, you know, cause I don't like to glaze over the power of the simple tools yes. and, and what they do for you after. And I love, you know, I, I talk a little bit about um, like mantra and sound. And, and I think if you have music that really mm. moves you, or even if you can get like the sound of the gong or any drone sounding, yes. you know, instrument, um, that's also really good for relaxing you. And so I'll listen to, to that or, you know, but I think these are all things that people should just know exist. Like yeah. they don't even know that you can just go on YouTube and put like drone sounds and you can find your way to sleep, to yeah. better sleep that yeah. way. Yeah. And then might, that might then also help you to say, oh, now I want to incorporate mantra or, you know, oh, I want to like, you know, start to now do the Kriyas or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. for people, it's like whatever the, the entry point is for them yes. is what I'm interested. Like, what's that going to be for you? I don't want to like layer all this stuff. Right. What's going to actually stick? Like take that thing 
and you know, and then see how that doesn't lead you to everything else. Well, I I really feel like you've done such a beautiful job of doing that in this Thank book. You. It really is. Anybody could open this and find something that, and you know, just as it's called, own your glow. I feel like you, the, the, there's actually a, a kind of transmission of inner mm. resourcing, which a lot of times when you get, I feel a lot of these kind of wellness rituals mm -hmm. are externalized. Yes, like that. You that there's some sort of just like God. God is outside of us, just like the, the government's outside of it. You know, mm -hmm. it's this, still this kind of um, toxic mimic of not being empowered. That's right. And what I, I really touch about your work is that it really, it feels like this is something that I can actually mm. internalize, I can metabolize, yes. it can become something of my own. So yes. really, oh, really beautiful. That was and so beautifully said. Yeah, well, the, the, it's it comes through the transmission. And I Thank know that you. that's always, as an artist and as a creator, mm -hmm. that's what you're, you know, that's what you're praying for that yes. the, the transmission comes and so it's it's coming it's clear thank, thank you. you thank oh you God, thank you and thank you for being here oh, and where can people kidding? find you just um i'm at at glow maven on instagram which is just g-l-o-w-m-a-v-e-n on um the book stuff is all at ownyourglowthebook.com which is a great little place to find out where else we're doing book things cool. as well as getting the book because awesome. we still need your support yes <laughs> yes um and otherwise if you're interested in baby world um just come to mama glow m-a-m-a-g-l-o-w dot com beautiful yeah. and you have do you have online programs there for women or you know what, what you... we do have so we're launching this new site really soon which is exciting yes yeah. so exciting so exciting um, which we have to have you on. Yes. And um, it's going to be, it's still, it'll be a beautiful, um, really easy to navigate space for people who are on the service side, who want to find um, support for fertility, mm. birth, and new motherhood. Yeah. So we will be actually doing a better job of communicating that we offer support for people who are on the hopeful expectant journey mm. to the new motherhood journey. So right now people come and they're, they come when they're already pregnant, yeah. but I would love for people to come when they're in the Bigger. process yeah. of, you know, thinking about this spirit that they want to invite through. So I, um, so we're doing a better job of that on this new iteration of the site. And then the other side will be more of like a magazine where people can go for amazing content mm. and um, conversation around these topics and how it can be um, more embodied, you know, yeah. in, in the process of um, becoming mothers and also the people who I believe are powerful voices around um, women become like really in this process of becoming because I think that this time is really about that yes. so much right it's like yes. em embodiment but not necessarily arriving someplace but constantly peeling back layers and mm. and really becoming it's like that like the the rose like you know you never really get to the bud it's just like you constantly see it just opening yeah. and I think for women now are being called to open in so many ways and um, and we need to find people who resonate with us and who anchor us and, and remind us of who we are. And that's why I'm so grateful for you Thank because you. you do this for so many and also like train people and guide people. But but we need we need um, servant leaders. Yeah. Because I think that it's right now. It's a great now, term. Right? It's like because people don't, they, they say they want to be of service. Yeah. But when it actually comes down to what service looks like, um, it's messy. It's messy. Yeah. It's not always like <laughs> cute and fun and whatever. It's not cute and you're fun. Like touching you're, you're, people. Yeah, you're, you're like touching people. You're like, yeah. So it's not what people think. So you have to, you really do have to rise in your, yeah. in your leadership in that. And that's why I love that people like you are offering training. We will be um, training our cohort of doulas starting in um, early 2018. Okay, that's what I was hoping to hear, because yeah. that's really important. I, yeah. I feel like that, you know, because the, 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 just to have mm -hmm. women who you trust who are doing the work and, yes. and, and able to help more women. So that's yeah. very exciting. Can people, can women sign up for that training? They can sign up for that training. Um, well, first come, because the site's not launched yet, um, you can still go to mamaglow.com, but if they go to info at mamaglow.com, they can learn more about the training. That's and awesome. And it's really also um, another commitment of ours to make sure that 
everybody who has the dream can come. So to your point about making wellness accessible, um, you know, leadership in wellness so that it can be diverse and everybody can come, we will have uh, a number of positions um, of sort of like scholar apprenticeship positions yeah, yeah. so that people can come um, who ordinarily would not have been able to afford to Amazing. and their give back will be of service to women um, single mothers or single mothers by choice or people who otherwise um, would not have been able to afford doula service. Yes. Part of their um, gift will be to serve those people as they and matriculate as well. That's yeah. amazing. Wonderful. We just have to, right? It's like so every, it's, everybody important. deserves. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this was a in the in the kind of primordial space of uh, the the time before this patriarchal age mm -hmm. i mean it was not you wouldn't even think to not have a doula of course you had a doula yeah. it may have not been called that but you had the women, women around you and right. and and not that that didn't happen through this age as well but it is it's, it's something that women's limbic systems and our parasympathetic nervous systems change when we're together they it, do. and so just miracles can happen so mm -hmm. thank you i'm so excited about thank that you. i hope some um of the women out there are going to join you for that because that's is that going to be in New York? It's going to be in New York. Okay, good. Yes. Awesome. In Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being Thank here today. So and good luck on, I know you have um, some more soldiering to do on the book and I hope it just goes so beautifully Thank and you. just a big prayer and uh, so many blessings. I received that. Thank you. Thank you.